Hello and welcome to a new video about standard elements. Last time we did the PI element. Okay. This time we are taking care about this, the PD element. Okay, the PD element we said, hey, here is a, a peak fuk. Uh, it is not working like it should, uh, like it is in reality. Uh, we had such situation before. We had this derivation element, remember? There was also this peak here. Whoop. Uh, can this be seen? Here, back, peak to infinity. We said, oh, this is not working. We need to damp it a little bit and use this element for this, uh, the PT1 element. So we used the D element and the PT1 element and the result was the TT1 element. Uh, where this peak was not that severe anymore. Uh, maybe I put it down here. Uh, so we had this D element uh, with this peak. Zack, zack. Uh, we used the PT1 element to produce a DT1 element where this peak was not that severe anymore, like a little bit more real. Uh, now we have pretty much the same situation with our PT element here we made in one of the last videos, there's also this peak. So, we are using the same approach. We are now, these ones I don't need, we are now putting together a PT element with a PT1 element. And the result is a PTT1 element. <laughs> okay? So, we are trying to put or to, to use a PT element to make it more realistic. Okay? And therefore, we are producing the PTT1 element. Okay? What went, what have we done it did our dt element dt1 element we have used our t element and afterwards we used a pt1 element and here we are doing exactly the same now this time we are using here this pt element okay and afterwards we are using the pt1 So you see, it's absolutely the same approach. Then there is the output value. There is the input value. Xi from S, Xo from S. And this is something in between. Remember the transfer function of the PT1 element, a PT, PT element. Ah, la, la, la. Now it's already getting confusing me. Yeah? So this GPT yeah, from S was KP multiplied by 1 plus S and I now don't, I now don't call it TT, I call it T1 because it's simply the first element here. Okay. Then, then we have the transfer function of this element here. Okay, transfer function of this element, gt1 from S is, remember, k divided by 1 plus st. This time I will use kt divided by 1 plus st2 because it's the second element simply. Okay. Two elements after each other, yeah? so the total transfer function g from s equals gp t from s yeah? multiplied by this gt1. Yeah? And the result is, of course, kp1 plus st1 multiplied by kt divided 1 plus st2. 
So we could simply write this is Kp multiplied by Kt multiplied by 1 plus st1 divided by 1 plus st2. So we can still see the colors of the, where the origin was. And now I'm starting to mix up because this one constant multiplicated with constant is constant, so this is a k. Yeah? And I will simply use this k1 plus st1 divided by 1 plus st2. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the transfer function of a PTT1 element. Okay. Now let's have a look at the, at the frequency response. We are replacing the S again with J omega. So we are resulting in K multiplied by 1 plus J omega T1 divided by 1 plus J omega T2. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean for the absolute value? Well, we have k multiplied by the absolute value of this. So this is the square. It was 1 plus omega t1 squared divided by the square root 1 plus omega t2 squared. Now well, we are already getting more complex things here. And the argument g for j omega is the argument of this. Well, it's zero. Zero plus, because it's multi multiplication, this argument yeah? And this is arcus tangens from omega t1 minus this, and this is arcus tangens from omega t2. Okay, so this is the absolute value, and this is the argument. Let's draw this. Let's try to to analyze this situation here. Real, imaginary. I will only draw those two parts because it's multiplication with k. It's just getting longer. Huh? It's not really, not really that complicated. Let's have a look at this term here. 1 plus j omega t1. Yeah? So here's 1. Here is omega t1. Yeah? So this is the upper term. Okay. Now let's have a look at this term here. Yeah? 1 plus j omega t2. 1, okay. And now I'll make it a little bit longer. Omega t2. So there is a red angle and a purple angle. Okay. What does it mean at the extremes? Yeah. We will also try to have a look at the extremes. Like always. Omega equals zero omega equals infinity. At omega zero, yeah, absolute value at omega zero. If I put in here zero, there's zero, this is zero, one, one divided by one, because this will also get zero, so it's just k. We are at k. And the absolute value at infinity. Ooh, I'm getting again 
this situation where I have unlimited divided by unlimited. So that's not defined actually. However, I can do pretty much the same trick here with this. So because this is k multiplied by 1 plus j omega t1 divided by j omega divided by 1 plus j omega t2 divided by j omega. Yeah. So actually this is k multiplied 1 divided by j omega plus t1 divided 1 divided by j omega plus t2. Yeah. And now if I now have a look and put this to unlimited, this will get zero, this will get zero, so and ending up at k multiplied by t1 divided by t2. So this is at unlimited frequency the absolute value. Good. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what it means here. Yeah. So the argument at zero. Arcus tangens from zero to zero. Arcus tangens from zero to zero. So we are at zero degree. At zero frequency, we are at zero degree. Good. Argument at unlimited. G, I forgot G. Ooh. Let's see what is happening here. So if this is unlimited high, this will be 90 degree. If this is unlimited high, this will be 90 degree. And the purple angle minus the red angle. 90 minus 90 is also zero degree. Now that's interesting, right? That's interesting. Now let's think what is in between. What is be somewhere in between? Yeah? So if omega is not zero and not omega is not unlimited. Well, it depends a little bit what happens with t1 and t2. You see, in this case, yeah? in this case, if t1 is smaller than t2, yeah? because the omega is the same, Frequency is the same frequency. So if t1 is smaller than t2, in case t1 is smaller than t2, yeah? the argument, because it's the purple angle minus the red angle, purple is above, red is below, yeah? this means the argument of j omega, something small minus something big, is smaller than zero. Okay? And in case t1 is bigger than t2, so this means the purple is now above. Uh, those two change simply their positions. Then it's something big minus something small. Uh, then we are bigger than zero. Okay? So there are two cases. One case, we are bigger than zero, our resulting argument. Second case, our resulting argument is smaller than zero. However, at the extremes, we will be at zero. BTT1 element. Okay. Now, let's draw this in a Bode plot. Okay. Let's have a look at the Bode plot and the step response. We are talking about the BTT1 element. I will simply transfer, I will simply write down the transfer function. So we said our gs equals k 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2. And our g from j omega equals k 1 plus j omega t1 divided by 1 plus j omega t2. What is resulting in our absolute value is k multiplied by the square root of 1 plus omega t1 squared divided by 1 plus omega t2 squared. Okay. And the argument we said is the arcus tangens from 
omega t1 minus arcus tangens from omega t2. Okay. So these are the values. Let's have a look at this. We also, I mean, we could again draw it point by point, yeah? but we will do the same trick we used at the PD element. So we are separating this, this transfer function. Yeah? So this equals, there is a K multiplied by one plus ST1. Yeah? And then there is a remaining one divided by 1 plus st2. Okay, so this is a pt1 element yeah, with k1, and this here is a pd element. Yeah, and it's multiplication between those two. Let's remember what it means. Let's start with the pt1 element. The pt1 element looked like this. Yeah. So here we had omega g, which was 1 divided by t. Uh, and we started here at k. Okay. So k is now 1. So we start here. Uh, and at 1 divided by t2, we want to do a band. So I will simply assume here at 10, we will drop, we will start to drop. So in my example here, this is 1 divided by t2. Yeah. In my example, t2 would be 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1 seconds. So below here, we are here at minus 45 degree. We are here at 0. Here we are somewhere at minus 90. And in between, I have this transition, yeah? so we will look like we will look like this. Yeah? We will start to drop here somewhere, go down, and then slowly turn into minus 90, but never exceeding. So this is the PT1 part. Yeah? This is this part. And now let's have a look at at this part. Hmm? Let's say uh, k is 0 0.5. Yeah? So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5. Here we are at 0 0.5. Yeah? And if we have a look at our transfer function or our, our frequency response, there was 1 plus STT, here there was this band at 1 divided by TT, so there is a band at 1 divided by T1, here we are at K, yeah? K in my case is 0 0.5, yeah? and I will simply make now T1 smaller, yeah? so we are somewhere here, yeah, I, will, I will say T1 is now 10 seconds, yeah? so we would bend here, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, so we are moving up here. Here we are at 0 degree, here we bend, here we are at plus 45, yeah. here we are at 0, and here we end up at 90, and in between I again have this transition from 0 to plus 90. Yeah. So this is now the PD part. Yeah. So this is PD, and this is a PT1 element. Now we only have to put this together. Mm -hmm. Now we only have to put this together. And they said multiplication in a logarithmic scale is like moving, like shifting. Here one is 
the PT1 part is 1. So we are not shifting this part. Yeah? We are not shifting this part at all. So we will simply be here. And here is the transition phase. Here we stay at 1. Yeah? So this will be the same, the same, the same. Yeah? But what happens here? Here we are no longer 1. Okay, here we are no longer one. So we will then this dropping and this rising, we had this already, yeah? this is compensating each other, so we will remain constant here. This will, will remain constant. Yeah? So actually where we end up is something like this. Make always the transitions here a little bit with factor square root of 2, this is how it looks like. This is how a PTT1 element, where T1, here we are at 1 divided by T1, so T1 is bigger than T2. T1 is bigger than T2. What does it mean for the phase? The phase is actually adding. Yeah? So the blue line plus the brown line. Yeah? And we can see here we are plus 90, we are at minus 90, so here we are at zero again. Yeah? And here this minus this would be here somewhere, here we are almost here. Yeah? So we will end up looking like this, grow, and drop again. We see at small frequencies we have zero, at high frequencies we also have zero. This is exactly what, what was the result here. Yeah, at small frequencies we are zero, at high frequencies we are zero, and in between we are at plus, because T1 is bigger than T2, at T1 is bigger than T2, the argument is bigger than zero. This is resulting here, yeah? without, just by adding those things with some graphical approach. Yeah? Also here, where do we end up here? Here, this value. This is now interesting, yeah? because this we don't know. This we know, we know where we bend here, we know where we bend here. Yeah? How far are we? Well, what we know is that we grow, uh, and we grow, we know if we grow two times more, it's two times more. If we grow ten times more, it's ten times more. If we grow one thousand times more, it's one thousand times more. Uh, so we just have to find out how much more frequency we have. So we just have to find out if we have here one divided by t2, one divided by t1. How often is this frequency contained in this frequency? Yeah. Well, and the result is then, it's T1 divided by T2. This is the factor, this is higher. Yeah. Here we had gain K, so here must be K multiplied by exactly this factor T1 divided by T2. Okay. And we had this here, yeah? at unlimited frequency, k multiplied by t1 divided by t2. This graphical approach resulted in exactly the same answers like we had. Good. That's for the frequency response. Now let's have a look at the step response. I'm sorry that I cannot draw it that those two things fit together. Because, you know, right now, let's, let's try to figure it out. Uh, step response, here, here is zero. So here is zero, we can agree on that. 
Here we have high frequency, so we're going to jump to k multiplied by t1 divided by t2. In my case, this would be 50. 50, I would jump to 50. I cannot draw 50 here, huh? because it's simply too short. So I will simply draw it to, I will simply draw it to 5 and say it's 50. <laughs> okay. And we know in the end we will go in to end up at k. Huh? Here we set k 0 0.5, so we end up at 0 0.5. So here, the peak value is k divided by t1 divided, multiply, k multiplicated with t1 divided by t2. Uh, this is the peak value here, simply because we have high frequency. And now, it's, it's smalling down. Yeah? And here this t2 would be 0.1. Yeah? So I will simply say this is 0 0.1. So from here to here is the drop. And after 5 t's we are there. Look like this. We are going down here. But not, and this is now the difference to a PT element, not to zero. This is the difference to a TT1 element, we are not going to zero, because we have to still this P, proportional part, here we are at K. We will end up at K, proportional part. This is how this looks like. In case T1 was bigger than T2. Okay. Let's see how it looks if T1 is smaller than T2. Yeah, but this would then have to look different because then we have here a different angle. Yeah. So I will simply use again, maybe make it that way, I will simply use again, right here B T T1 element, second approach, yeah. and I will again draw this B T1 element here, okay, so we are at zero, at one, and now I simply will shift the rows. Yeah? So we start to drop here. So now T2 is 10. Here we are at 1 divided by T2 again. So we are at minus 45 degree and we will end up here at minus 90. This is the PT1 part. Yeah? And now I'm using, now I'm using, well, we'll start now at five. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. So my K is now five. Yeah? And I will simply say T1 is 0 0.1. Yeah? So we'll start growing from here. Yeah? Here we have 1 divided by t1 and we will grow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is how this looks like. Okay. And here we have plus 45 degree yeah? at exactly this frequency. We will remain zero here. We will then start to grow and we will slowly go to plus 90 degree. Now we have the case that T1 is 
smaller than T2, uh, the other way around. Let's have a look what it means. Yeah. Here we are at 1. Uh, so here we will stay here. Uh, and then we will start to drop. So from here we will drop simply. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it will end up that we are dropping here. Parallel to this line. Because we shifted, practically we shifted this line with our multiplication of k. This exactly this 5 times up. Okay. And now this is growing. This is not growing. So we will remain here constant again. This time. It looks like this. So we are going down here. And then remain constant. Where do we end up here? Let's think about this right now. So how much bigger is this frequency than this frequency? 1 divided by t1 divided by 1 divided by t2. So this time we have t2 divided by t1. Yeah. And this time yeah, I know that we are going down. If this means 10 times more frequency, only a tenth of the result is the output. So this means my gain here, yeah, this one, this is k divided by t2 divided by t1, huh? not multi no multiplication, and now this is k multiplied by t1 divided by t2, so we are ending at k t1 divided by t2, exactly, exactly the same value, where I had this there, exactly the same value, k divided by t1 t2, huh? so there is no difference, huh? if we just write it that way, there is no difference at all. Let's see how this looks here. Yeah. Here we are ending up. We will simply be the other way around. Yeah. Here we are going down because now the first thing which is happening is that we are going down and then we are going up again. Reaching zero. And really, we talked about this. At zero, zero, at unlimited zero, and in between, lower than zero. Also from the graphical approach, it's the same result. Good, huh? And now here, let's have a look. I can also tell you, I cannot draw it exactly like it should be. Yeah? Because this time I would only jump to 0 0.05. 0 0.05 I cannot draw. I would simply say 0 0.5. Yeah? So here the first jump is at k t1 divided by t2. Yeah? Here we are jumping up and the result at 0 is k. Yeah? And I will k is 5 here in this case. So it will be somewhere here. Yeah? This is the end value. Okay. And how fast do we approach this? Well, there is again this T2. T2 is in this time, is in this case 10. So at 10, this is the time constant. So this is the starting tangent. And at 5t, we are almost there. So it will look like this. Somehow. Here we're ending up at k. First jump at k divided by t1 to t2. Yeah. Jump and then slide over. So the end values are the same. K is the end values, that's the end value. And since now this t1 
is smaller than T2, yeah, we will go down and here we will go up and then this peak will be slowed down by the PT1 element simply. So these are the two possibilities in the PTT1 element. Next time we're going to talk about a IT1 element. Well, that's basically, you know, if a, if a T and a PT1 element is a PT1 element, if a PT and a PT1 element is a PTT1 element, what would an IT1 element be? Will an I and a PT1 element. Yeah. How this is resulting, how this looks like and turning out, coming out, we will see in next video. Like I said, I'm sorry that I could not show this, how it fits together. I will link a file in the video description where you can download where it fits together, where the scales and so on, they are fitting yeah? and then we know. Uh, then you see exactly how it looks like. Yeah. With these words, I will end. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.